harmonize one melody note with 12 different chords. This is awesome for songwriting, composing, arranging, harmonizing, theory study, getting creative, fretboard knowledge. If you're wondering what chords go with what melody notes or how reharmonization works, then this video should be helpful. Well, really, you can support any melody note with any chord that includes that note in it. So this is a fun little game that I like to play where we're going to keep one melody note going on the top and a chord voicing that supports that melody note off of every single root. That's why we're going to have 12 different chords that support the same single melody note. So we'll just walk through our 12 chords that all harmonize our one note and talk about why they work. Then we'll listen to the chords and melody together in time to see how it sounds as real music, as like a solo guitar sound. Then just for fun, we're going to see what it sounds like to improvise over the progression that we happen to make. It's going to be fun. That's what we're going to cover. Let's get into it. <laughs> By the way, I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com, where I teach how to go deep on the guitar and become proficient and fluent, have more creative control, express ourselves more freely, feel like real musicians. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell and follow. I have new videos every week. Let's get started. The melody note that we're going to play is F. This is on the sixth fret on the second string. And that's where I'm going to play it for every chord voicing. So we can hear them, hear these chords harmonizing. We're going to start our first bass note on F sharp. So the first chord is going to be F sharp major seven because the melody note can be the major seven of it. So now we have one, three, five, and then the major seven with this shape that you see on the screen here that I'm playing, that you're hearing. The, we're just going to go down descending chromatically and find a chord voicing that fits. The next one I'm going to do is F diminished seven. Uh, now the voicing I'm going to play is not going to actually have the flat five in it, which typically you'd have with, uh, which is in a diminished seven chord, but we have one flat three, double flat seven, and then the root again. So the root of this chord is also the melody, and that's the voicing I'm gonna play to be able to play the root and the melody at the same time. Okay, awesome. We're gonna go down to E. Well, the first thing we can ask ourselves every time is, well, what is the melody against the root? And then what kind of chords fit with that? Well, the melody against the root in this case is a half step up from the root, so it can be a flat nine. So any chord that allows a flat nine uh, can be a chord that harmonizes this. So, so we'll choose E7 flat nine, E dominant seven flat nine. You can play this by barring or with the tips of your fingers. Okay, moving on down to E flat. Okay, well, ooh, lovely open sound. That is a nine, so the melody is now the nine of this chord root. So I'm gonna play E flat, six, nine. So this is one, three, six, nine. Lovely chord voicing. Okay, going down to D. What is the melody now? It's the flat three of D. Okay, I'm gonna play a D minor 11 for this. Now obviously you can, there's many, many chords that can work to harmonize. Um, for example, we could, have it be the sharp nine of this Jimi Hendrix chord. We could have it be the flat three of minor seven instead of minor 11. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. I'm just choosing what I like in the moment. So D minor 11, okay. We're gonna go down to D flat. Now the melody note is the major third, okay. So, wow, so many things. We could do D flat major triad, D flat major seven, D flat dominant seven, you could do so many chord types. I'm gonna do D flat dominant seven flat five. So this is root, this is flat five, this is flat seven, and this is the third. So D flat seven flat five. Okay, uh, going down to the next root. Well, now this is the four or the 11. The melody note is the four or the 11 of this C root here. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a C sus four. Just a nice open C sus4. We have the root and then the five and then the root again and then the sus4. Okay, we gotta go down. I'm running out of space over here, so I'm gonna go to da, da, I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to B here. I almost said C sharp because we're actually gonna play a C sharp chord. And we're gonna play C sharp seven over B. So B is the low note. This is a cool one here because um, C sharp is the root of the chord, but I'm intentionally doing a slash chord where it's saying you have to play B as the low note. So this is C sharp dominant seven with B as the lowest note. Love this chord shape. This is the third inversion 
of C sharp dominant seven. This is a third inversion dominant seven chord shape. So that means I'm kind of thinking of the root right here and I'm playing off the flat seven. So, okay, C sharp seven over B, okay? Now we're going to harmonize off B flat and the melody note is the five. So you can do so many things uh, with this one. I'm gonna choose B flat minor six, but any chord that has a natural five, you can choose. So it could be major, it could be major seven, it could be uh, minor triad, it could be anything with a five. B flat minor six. And I'm not really thinking of how these chords interact with each other. I'm listening for it, I'm feeling for it, um, and, and maybe taking into account what, where the notes might move that sound good. Um, but I'm not thinking much more than that, and then we're gonna see how it sounds as real music in a minute. Going down to A, okay, well now the melody is the sharp five or the flat 13. Okay, flat 13 is flat six, so sharp five and flat six are the same note inharmonically. And we're gonna play A7 sharp five is what I would like to play here. And I want you to look at the B flat minor six to the A7 sharp five. Well, that's a great example of why I might choose a specific voicing. This is beautiful voice leading where the, the bass moves down and the top three notes stay the same. So I'd like to you know, keep notes the same or move by step, half step or whole step, wherever possible. Okay, uh, A flat. Okay, well now it's the 13 or the six. The melody is the 13 or the six. I'm gonna play A flat major 13. So it's an A flat major seven chord with a 13, which is the same as six. If you wanna know about chord theory from beginning to advance, from beginner to advance, check out my chord theory series. It's a huge YouTube series. I'll put a link in the description to that. It explains what all this stuff is, chord extensions, uh, from scratch, how to get uh, a full understanding and fretboard uh, map out of this. So check that out if you're if you're like, whoa, what are you talking about? Uh, how do you know it's the 13? That's all explained in my uh, chord theory series, and the link is in the description. Okay, A flat major 13. One more chord, and this is G. So now this is the flat seven. So you could just do G dominant seven. You could do G minor seven. Anything with a flat seven in it. Um, I'm going to choose G, uh, G7 flat nine sus four. Here's G, here's the flat nine, here's the sus four, and here's the flat seven, which is our melody note. Ooh, yes, G7 flat nine sus four. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to F sharp major seven. So those are 12 chords off 12 different roots that all harmonize that same melody note, just walking through what they are and how they work and how that melody note is staying the same and is a chord tone every time of every chord. Now I'm going to demonstrate it in a music context, just on the guitar with those same voicings in time. I'll use a kind of a bossa nova feel like this. And I'll repluck the melody for every chord shape as the chords move down so we can kind of hear that. See if you can listen for, yes, the melody staying the same on top and yes, the harmony and the feeling of the harmony changing. See if you can also listen for this specific thing happening. That descending chromatic uh, root note or not always the root, but the bass note at least of every voicing that's happening. So uh, let's see how that goes. Pretty cool, pretty hard to play, but fun to hear the melody and the harmony move like that with a groove. Let's try another step and let's see if the progression works improvising over it. Um, I think that's gonna be pretty hard, but let's give it a go. I'm gonna play the progression with kind of a bossa comping feeling like that again, and then try to improvise over the progression and see how it feels. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
If you want to study more of this chord and harmony stuff on your own, grab my free chord chart called Chords with Color. It shows a bunch of different chords and a bunch of interchangeable options for those chords. And it shows the theory numbers, the labels for every chord. Almost no other chord chart does that. So it shows the actual chord tone labels of every chord and all the extensions to them and everything. So it's a great uh, application to just study chord theory and voicings that way with that chord chart. There's a link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. And if you want to know what I was doing and how I'm thinking about playing over changes when I did that improvisation example, check out my two chord tone improvisation videos. I'll put links to those in the description as well as a link to my playlist series on mapping out arpeggios and chord tones and how to do that on any chord. And let me know what your biggest takeaway was in this lesson. Was it that every note can be harmonized with every possible bass note? Maybe it was one of the chord qualities that we ended up using, or maybe it was that we can make actual music out of such a random chord progression that we ended up making from this harmonization practice and then seeing if it works as real music, which I thought it did. It was pretty funky and, and weird and interesting, but that's what's cool about it. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you especially liked. I'm doing this to help you reach those guitar goals and find fulfillment in music. And the comments really help let me know that I'm on the right track doing that. So thank you so much for those. Special thanks to Kenneth Martin, who commented and said, this is the best I've ever seen chord names explained. You crushed this. Thank you. Uh, that was on my video explaining chord extensions. If you're interested in learning about how to make sense of chord extensions, check out that lesson. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. There's a section down there that says links mentioned in this video. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson, I'm going to share with you what I think is the best warm-up exercise. This is the warm-up exercise I do every single time I play guitar. Almost every single day I play this warm-up exercise. So I'm going to share that next week with my next video. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.